Thomas wanted to be famous. He wanted people to notice him. So he did the logical thing. He decided to have a child because if he had a child and they were a genius, he would be the famous father of a genius. Amos found himself a wife who decided to marry him. And a year later, the pair had a little girl that Amos named Albert. I need to have a child who's a genius. People admire a clever child, and if they admire my child, then they will admire me too. So Amos Sterling advertised for a wife. One year later, Betty gave birth to a beautiful baby girl, and Amos christened her Albert. But Albert's a boy's name. Albert is the name of the greatest genius this world has ever known. But Albert Einstein was a man. Amos was not listening. He was dreaming of the day when his daughter would accept the prize for being the most brilliant person on the planet. And he would be standing right next to her. As soon as Albert's father got her home, he began to teach her subjects that no day-old child could understand. When she failed to understand them, either by getting distracted by a bird or doing anything babies usually do at that age, he locked the world out, putting up metal shutters on her windows that were only opened at night because he thought fresh air did her mind good. However, for three years, on Albert's birthday, she would be paid a visit by someone called the Childhood Snatcher, who would pluck one of Albert's fine hairs from her head. Albert would wake up the next day, not wanting to take part in anything childish, like playing with other kids, enjoying her own birthday, or even wanting her mother to hold her. One night, Albert was wakened by a long black shadow. And when she cried, a gentle voice soothed her. Good evening, Albert, said the childhood snatcher. I have been summoned by your father to take but one soft new hair from the top of your pretty little head. Now go back to sleep. All she cared about was her lessons. Soon, Albert had achieved everything her father wanted, going to college and even becoming prime minister. On her fourth birthday, Albert received her final visit from the childhood snatcher. On the night before her third birthday, Albert was drafting a party political broadcast when the childhood snatcher floated into her room. Good evening, said Albert. Good evening, Prime Minister. Tonight is the last time we shall ever meet. Tonight, I have come to finish my work. I thought it was finished. I no longer think like a child. What else is there for you to take from me? Your youth and beauty, he said. There. <laughs> when Albert's parents ran into the room, their little girl had gone. And in her place was a little old lady. This is all your fault. If you hadn't forced Albert to be a grown-up while she was still a child, none of this would ever have happened. And Amos hung his head like a very naughty boy. There is no doubt what Grizzly Tales is trying to say. I still find it hilarious that he is American, an idiot, and completely obsessed with fame to the point where the only reason why he got married was to have a kid to become famous through Grizzly Tales foreshadowing Honey Boo Boo before it even became a thing. I like this episode of Grizzly Tales for two reasons. One is its message. Letting your child have a childhood is an important part of that child's development. 
You go through your stages of life for a reason. Let them have their fun and enjoy themselves. Pushing your child to overachieving creates a large amount of stress on them and it feels like the weight of the world is on their shoulders. While applying pressure at the right time is needed for some kids, it's not for a lot of other kids. A childhood is just as important as an education. And if you don't, they may end up looking like Michael Jackson. And two is the way the story is told. The allegory of Amos wanting to be famous and wanting to be noticed and doing this through his daughter can be seen as him having no meaning to his own life and wanting to live vicariously through her. Even his name sounds like the word aimless. Albert's hairs that are plucked from her head by the childhood snatcher could be a representation of the stages of life that she missed out on. Infancy, childhood, adolescence, and adulthood. Even the childhood snatcher points out when he visits her for the last time that he came back for her youth and beauty. And Albert being the Prime Minister by the end of the episode could be a representation of the pressure that she's under as a child within her position. But it could also be just a children's program that I'm reading way too much into. So I'm gonna stop. <laughs>